you know, think about more than just your beer, your brewery. It's really hard for a lot of people at breweries to get out of their brewery, out of their shoes, out of their role as a producer of a beverage and think about it, not just from a consumer standpoint, but just a human standpoint. Welcome to the Capital Craft Podcast by the San Diego Brewers Guild. I'm your host, Eric Fowler, Executive Director for the Brewers Guild. I'm Jeff Fox, and uh, I run Beer Media Co. And we are here today with Brandon Hernandez of San Diego Beer News. Thanks for hanging out with us. My pleasure. I'm really excited to be on the first episode of this. Wow. Yeah, Yeah, first recorded, at least. First recorded. (laughs) There's so many more in in the vaults. Yeah. Right. So, you know, we really wanted to sit down today and, and, and talk about media's relationship with the industry. And when we're saying industry, we're talking about breweries and the different employees and departments within those breweries. Mm-hmm. You have a long tenure within the San Diego beer media industry, and we're looking to kind of get your experiences on how breweries locally or nationally can work with different uh, media outlets like your own. Sounds great. Uh, having been on both sides, working for breweries as well, I'm happy to offer anything that I have for you guys. When you're working with different breweries, there's there's breweries of all different sizes, all different themes, all different needs. Who's your perfect brewery for you to work with? What does that look like? Uh, one that's communicative. Honestly, it for for an outlet like mine, I really want to tell the stories of everybody in San Diego County. There is no but there is no prime list for me. There's no blacklist for me. It's really, if you have news to share, I'd love for you to let me know. That'd be great. I mean, I hear it through other sources as well. I have a whole bunch of people who kind of helped keep me informed and I am always communicating with people within the industry. So I'll find out things just naturally and organically, but, um, just being open, communicative and, um, ready to, uh, take some time to help me tell your story. That's my kind of ideal person, somebody I can work with closely and just make sure, get the message out their way factually with as many details as possible for people who would be interested in that sort of thing, whether it's an expansion, whether it's an event, whether it's a fundraiser, a new beer that's of note. And, uh, yeah, just somebody who remembers that I'm here and can help them out. It's, really? it's, it's super funny because like a lot of times like your job and my job are to tell people about awesome things that are going on. It's like, just help me help you. Like I want, yes, I want I feel, to help you. I feel you. like Jerry Maguire on a regular basis. Sometimes yeah. when I see, I'll, I'll see some, somebody's got something going on and I, and I never knew about it somehow. And I'm like, Oh man, I wish you would have just told me. And, yeah, I, 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 and they're like, can you help me get everywhere. this out there? I'm like, of course, of course I'd love to, I'd love to do that. That'd be wonderful. So yeah, I, I, I'm, I've often on my knees in that uh, restroom, just begging. Yeah. Help me. <laughs> just help you. Help me. Help yeah. you. I'm easy. Yeah. <laughs> to say the least. Does, uh, w- when you're working d- with developing those relationships, are you looking for a formal press release? Are you looking for a text message, an email? And, uh, and how important is it that the brewery understands their own identity and purpose of the project beer expansion that they're sending you help you? I see what you're saying. Uh, yeah, for me, like I said, I am I am easy in that way in that I'll take it however you would like to present it to me. It could be as simple as a text. It could be a phone call. It could be an email. It could be a formal press release. I tend to not want the press release so much because I'd rather, you know, ask questions, get get answers, because I like to use quotes in my articles and really, as much as I can, let, let the people at that brewery tell their story their way in their voice. I think mm-hmm. that that's uh, one of the aspects of San Diego Beer is that people really enjoy the readers. It, it's it's more than just a uh, you know a litany of facts. Um, so I'm open to anything. That said, I'm not like a lot of other outlets where the press release would be the nat- first natural step. You want to have all of your information and facts laid out in a way that piques interest with media outlets, be it TV, radio, or um, a magazine, because they're not going to have the relationships I have because I focus you know, solely on this industry and then even more uh, broken down to this county. So it might and, help to do both. If you're looking at developing a PR plan. Sure. And you need to know, you know, as you get going through it, you're going to have relationships with different media people and know what they prefer. I mean, if you can get a relationship started with somebody who's say like an anchor on a uh, morning news show and they're really covering beer all the time. If you've been on a couple of times, you have their card, you know, you have their information. uh, 
you, you might just be able to ping them and it can be that simple, but first you have to make that relationship happen. So it's really about assessing the local market. You need to know as much as you know your competition as a brewery, you need to know your media outlets, the people within them, what they cover, how they cover it and how they like things. Um, so it sounds daunting at first, but as you do it, just like with anything else, you'll eventually get into it, figure it out. And, uh, within a, could be a relatively short time span of really concentrating your efforts. You can figure all of this out and then be able to act upon it in a way that makes the most sense for you. So everybody's different. Everybody wants to cover different things and you've got to know that kind of thing and, uh, figure it out. But it's not mysterious. It, it, it's easier than it sounds. And it, and it can actually be kind of fun getting into that just as much as uh, forming relationships within the uh, San Diego brewing industry and having people that you can confer with and talk with and share things with. It, it's kind of like that. When you look at it through that lens, I think it's a lot better for people who are like, oh, I didn't get in this industry to deal with media, but um, just kind of approach it that way. And I think it becomes a lot more enjoyable and efficient and successful. Day, merry mates of the podcast realm. It's your feathered friend, the Tapwise Owl, flapping in the lender wing to your brewery. An owl much wiser than me once said that recurring revenue is as delightful as a moonlit night. But let's face it, those loyalty programs from Arrive, Square, and Toast are a bit like a half kicked emu egg. Fear not, for I am here to soar to your rescue. My magical membership system lets you automatically collect recurring revenue and shower your guests with rewards and bring them back to your tap room. How's it done, you ask? Simple. Through your very own brewery app, mate. Custom branded, just for you. And here's the kicker. It works seamlessly with every point of sale out there. San Diego Brewery Guild members get up to $500 off. That's a bonza deal. So grab your owl whistle and give me a hoot. Nah, just kidding. It's not the 90s, mate. Hop on over to tapwise.com. That's T-A-P-W-Y-S-E.com. Or give me a squawk at 760-283-8847. Don't forget to drop Eric Fowler's name for a little extra magic. Fowler. Get it? No worries. Bit of a cranky parliament today. Cheers, Cobbers! Now is a harder time than ever for breweries to navigate the rapidly changing market. But Beer Media Co. is here to help. As a proud partner of the San Diego Brewers Guild, we are a full-service digital marketing and content creation company that works with San Diego breweries to reach new customers and create amazing engagement for their websites and social media accounts. If you are a small brewery owner trying to figure out the whole social media thing or a larger brewery looking to up their engagement, send us a message at info at beermedia.co because we know SD Beer. Yeah, and I think, you know, when we're looking at the community of our industry, there is a big aspect of that community that's kind of on the peripheral that that still helps promote the industry. They might do other things, Mm -hmm. but they're still involved. And and my first experience that, that was memorable to me was um, I was working for Chuck Alec Independent Brewers up in Ramona, and we had a little tap room up there, and we got we got to go to the San Diego International Beer Festival, and we were so excited. You know, we're going <clears> to <throat> send our beer there. It was all volunteer ports. So we got to enjoy it. Well, an article came out the next couple days, the best and worst beers of the San Diego International Beer Festival, and one of our beers was one of the worst beers. And what was disappointing about it, obviously very biased, it was a, a historic brown porter with Britannomyces. So when you're trying that blind, it's a, it, it's a beer that ex, it required a lot of explanation. Mm-hmm. And a volunteer, which, you know, is probably something I should have realized had been there and helped pour and helped educate the guests coming by, um, isn't going to explain that. They're going to say, you want the porter? And you want the IPA? Mm-hmm. And the porter? This porter is awful. Mm-hmm. So with no context, I wasn't surprised, but I was disappointed that we weren't given the opportunity to showcase who we are. And I, I ended up calling up the journalist the next week, had a phone call, invited him out to the brewery and said, you know, I think we we're misunderstood on this and misrepresented. Why don't you come out to the brewery and, and I'll give you flight myself. And um, it's just, it stuck with me as a learning experience and we probably didn't lose any business from it, but you know, hurt our pride a little bit. Absolutely. Especially when you probably weren't being covered by a lot of outlets to have that be the one thing that's kind of out there. And I, I'm assuming I know the outlet and it's pretty good circulation. I think that you handled it in a fantastic way, bringing people in, you know, say, Hey, make me feel so good. Find out what we're all about. You know, we'd love to have you out here. I respect your opinion. So like, let me tell you more about this beer and then more of the other historical styles we do like Chuck Alec used to do because that was kind of your bread and butter. But yes, it leads leads to being misunderstood. Uh, One thing that I would, really encourage people to do is if is to you know you get you have the liberty of you're more powerful than you think when it comes to media you have the liberty of selecting who you want to work with you don't have to work with 
certain people that you don't want to. If somebody rubs you the wrong way or you don't like negative coverage or you don't align with certain values of certain uh, media outlets, it's not like you have to do anything. It's like you don't need to catch out to these people. Believe it or not, they need you just yeah. as much, if not more than you need them. Mm -hmm. They need news. They want news. Um, if you can bring real news to them that's uh, interesting enough to be covered, that's wonderful. They're going to love that, especially if you do it in a professional manner. Like, uh, you know, the press release is great. That's mm -hmm. very professional. And if, if it's delivered in a professional manner, that's great, too. Uh, one thing I didn't hit on in your last question is uh, kind of knowing how to gauge your news. I think it's important to realize there's different tiers of news, like things that I need that I can actually work with for a full scale article would be the things I'm talking about. Like, uh, we're thinking of expanding. We're going to open a, we're opening tomorrow, our, our new tap room, or we're opening our brewery for the first time in the next month. These are big things that I can really, really work with, but there are so many events, fundraisers, individual beers being produced that they, as much as I wish that I could had that kind of bandwidth as a singular journalist, I just don't, but I have ways in which to project that very, you know, like on my side, I have what's tapping. It comes out every week, shows all the new beers that are tapping in town. So you, I can definitely use that information, but it's going to go there. Uh, a lot of the events will go in our upcoming events, part of our newsletter. I can put it there because I want there to be this uh, source for all of the readers. It serves a purpose. It's important. And I want it to be there, but full scale article, there's only so many of them. So just know that it's nothing personal. It's just, um, mm -hmm. let me gauge it. So here's my top tier news. We're opening, we're closing, we're opening this, we're closing that we're doing this full scale initiative. We just hired a new brewer. We did mm -hmm. things like that are going to be your big giant, you know, money press release thing to just about anybody. Uh, but then, you know, you don't want to hit everybody in your media list with every little press release you ever do, because that's the way that you get like knocked into the, it ends up in their trash and bin. do you see that? Or what's that? Do you see oh, gosh, over yes, frequency I, of sharing yeah, information? I, I, I mean, I receive press releases on a daily basis from other parts of the country that I can do nothing with. Like, what mm -hmm. am I supposed to do with this? You're, mm -hmm. a, okay, Trogues, like, what am I supposed to do with anything? I'm San Diego Beer News. I, like, take the time to know what they want and don't send them things they couldn't, can't use. That's the, that's the best thing It's like, okay, Every press release you do or every piece of news and like email you send out on a more broader scale, look at it. Who who really needs it? Look at your media list. Who really needs it? Who does, doesn't need it or probably won't do anything with it? Just skip them. Mm. It's okay. Just skip them if they're not going to do anything with it anyway and can't use it. This whole like scattershot approach, like just get the machine gun and pff, hit everybody. Uh, no, that's not going to work. And it's just going to make people less receptive to your stuff. Mm -hmm. So just like hit them when it matters. Hit them, hit them when it they can do something with it and uh, you or you feel like you really, really um, match the way that they report on the craft beer industry or the local beer industry or even just San Diego in general. Because sometimes there will be, say, an event for a certain charity or or a, or a nonprofit or a cause that's going to be that might reach the the journalist you're trying to hit. They're more about that cause right? Sure. or that neighborhood or that's their beat. And you're like, mm. OK, the, beer is supplementary at this point, but let's get in that way. You know, think about more than just your beer, your brewery. It's really hard for a lot of people at breweries to get out of their brewery, out of their shoes, out of their role as a producer of a beverage and think about it, not just from a consumer standpoint, but just a human standpoint. Sometimes there's just some really good human interest aspect of what you're doing. But, you know, you come in and into work every day or working virtually, whatever it might be. And you're just, of course, you're ingrained in that in that role in that company. But, you know, just challenge yourself to get out of your shoes a little bit. Think it. Think about it from the journalist perspective as well as the audience, and say, "Man, I I think your audience that really likes coffee is going to really love my brewery because I also have a roastery on site." Well, yeah, the beer yeah. is the what, not the why, yeah. right? And yeah. I think what you're saying is we it is important to focus on the what, but the what's a given, right? Mm -hmm. We're we're a brewery, we make beer, right? But the why is really what differentiates everybody. Yeah. How does that really uh, change, like on the social media perspective, on? You know, the San Diego Brewers Guild has a, a pretty big following, especially on Instagram. And mm -hmm. like, what what are you looking to repost or catch a story or really focus on? I mean, it's 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 kind of a lot of the same things is that, you know, we we're here to help and we want to tell everyone about things that are going on in the city and of what's happening in the industry. And so like if people can send us things, um, a lot of times we are very good about 
um, resharing and reposting things that are, were tagged in. So, um, you know, using those, you know, those hashtags and the at, you know, at SD beer and all those kinds of things to, um, SD brewers and, um, all of those different, um, tags, we get to see all that. And so we get notifications, we reshare stuff all the time. Um, on social, it's a lot more graphical, you know, everything's much more graphically intense, especially Instagram. So, um, if something's already produced something like a flyer or something that has information all kind of built into it, that helps us just because, you know, if, if we hear about something that's really cool, but now we have to go fi find a photo that's relevant and then go try to turn that into a social media mm -hmm. post. It's a little bit more difficult than them sending us the photo, sending us the, you know, the thing and or making a post that's already ready to go and us just hitting share. It's a, it's a, a little bit easier for us to do that, especially with the number of breweries that we work with. So is it the same thing in, in with what you do with um, like, is there any other materials that you recommend that they include like photos, videos, any of that stuff? Is that any of that relevant for you? Uh, imagery has never been more important than it is in this day and age with things moving so fast. It's not like uh, with the newspaper days where people had robust staffs to go run out really fast and go get some really good pictures of things. And I'm really surprised how often I'll talk to a brewery and say, Hey, could I just get uh, you know, just a, a shot of the exterior of your building? We don't have that. Uh, you know, it's like you, you, you don't have one shot of the exterior. I, I mean, I've reported recently on a place that closed after being in business for eight years. Mm -hmm. I looked, I combed every bit of the internet of their social media. And I'll be darned if they didn't have one shot of the interior of their building or the exterior that, and I couldn't believe it. I just like not even one. Okay. Well, I can accept that. Right. Because mm -hmm. people like, eh, they don't maybe have a marketing mind. Right. right. But to say, if somebody comes asking you from like a, a magazine or something, they can't they can't run a lot of things without something to put also a, a representation on their social media to help to get the eyes on this article. Mm -hmm. Don't just say, I don't have it. Say, I don't have it, but, yeah, you know, let me just walk out with the building with my iPhone and take a, a decent photo, mm -hmm. one that maybe you could even post produce and make it look a little better. Mm -hmm. Just do that. I mean, don't, don't take till yeah. I, I would advise people to take no out of that vocabulary when dealing with the, with the media, because, you know, they've got a lot of pressures and things on their mind too, and things that they need just to try to solve like, any, like you do anything in your, in your, uh, your brewery, solve it. Even if it's duct tape. You yeah. Know, even sure. in your, if you're in your tasting room, you're, you're constantly solving problems there. Just do the same thing with media. Like I don't have a picture. Well, let me go get one. I mean, we've all got a phone and uh, if you're bad at taking photos with your phone find the person in your in your company there's bound to be one who's good at it mm -hmm. say i like your instagram would you mind going outside taking a real quick picture of the exterior of my building sure well that took two minutes and mm -hmm. then you just shoop, send it right up it's so easy and it's there um just because like i said there's not always the bandwidth for the publication or the media outlet to go out there and do it for you and it's like 50 mm -hmm. minutes away i'm like it's like, yeah, sure, I'd love to come do it for you. I just can't because I have a million things that I have to do to make this happen as well. Yeah, I've, I've looked at articles that you've posted and I'm most interested in the visuals myself. And I've been surprised that they don't include what the brewery or taproom is going to look like or the people behind it. And, you know, when it comes to any video media or even podcasts, I've been surprised that, you know, especially brewery, brewer owners don't always tend to be the most extrovert of people, right? And a lot of people that work in production settings, not all of them, mm -hmm. um, but a lot of them tend to put a lot of their love into their craft and making something. And that's not, maybe not a skill set that they've developed. And I've asked certain breweries, would you want to be on this news segment? Would you want to be on this podcast? And sure. I've been surprised to be turned down. Mm -hmm. um, I think what's often misunderstood too is sometimes the timeliness and flexibility that's required. Um, you know, it's quite often, especially with local news, to be called the night before. Like, yeah. hey, can you get down here? And it's not always easy to rearrange your schedule, but hopefully yeah. you can have a team or find somebody that you feel comfortable representing your brewery. Mm -hmm. Even if it's just delivering stuff to the studio that maybe, you know, the guild or somebody that's a little more neutral can promote for you. But there's, there's actually like, I mean, there's been many times where we've been asked for something like a news station is asking us for a quick clip or a quick photo or something of like this. I actually think it's one thing that we've done is we put together a folder of stuff that we can send to the press. That's kind of more generic, easily usable things that are just attractive stuff that shows our, um, what we do in a, in a positive light. And I think breweries should probably do the same thing, which is like have, 
your it's a B-roll and candid shots and stuff. Yeah, photos. just so ready great. to go because they, they do that. They'll be like, hey, can you get it by 2 p.m.? I look at my watch and it's noon. I'm like, uh, yeah, let me get back to the office really quick off my lunch and, uh, you know, send it over to you really quick. But like if we didn't yeah. have it all prepared, it'd be pro- we'd probably miss an opportunity. Yeah. And something I'll say too, uh, a lot of people will tell you that's just the way the news is, right? It is. I don't necessarily stand up for that because I do believe that uh, there are ways to get around that. Like with my news segments, I have a monthly news segment on Fox five. I'm usually in touch with the people who are going to be on the next one, even more than the month ahead, getting them all ready, giving them all their dates. Here's what I need. Here's the dates. Well, you're um, not competing with the rain, right? In San Diego, if, as long as it, if it rains, <laughs> any segments going out the window and they're yeah. sitting in mission Valley, boy, watching up flood. Boy, isn't that the <laughs> truth. But, um, but I've had to help uh, my producer several times. Uh, she'll say, Hey, I got this thing for, for it's beer related. Could you help me get some people on tomorrow morning? It's a nightmare, you mm-hmm. know, like I'm just doing it to do it. It's not like I'm getting paid for anything. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm just like trying to get people and it's really tough, <laughs> but I understand that. And I, I want people to also know that like, you don't have to um, always be available. It's just, you do need to remember that yes, it's painful, but at the same time you're reaching hundreds of thousands of people that you for free. Uh, so you kind of got to weigh it out, but I always think it's worth it. And I'm just a glutton for punishment. So I'll just say yes and I'll go and I'll do, I'll do it. Like when you guys called me to do this yesterday, just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> um, but if you don't have everything, it's okay too. But I, I, we, I think that people, even in the news, they do realize that it's not easy what they're asking you to do, even though they're used to it. That said, the people who say yes, they'll remember you. The people who say no, they'll remember you. Not necessarily, not fondly but they will always remember who said yes and came and did a really good job. Mm -hmm. And always remember too, that you're not, hopefully you're not an island unto yourself. If somebody asks you to be on TV and you're like, oh man, I can't, I'm just like way too scared of that. Or I won't do a good job. Remember that there's other people within your organization. I think a lot of times, um, especially on the, I don't understand why, but on the brewer side, um, you almost always just see the Dobo or the head brewer. And I don't understand why. Because there's a whole team of people doing this. It's like, you might have a real young guy who grew up in, you know, more in this age and is therefore like used to be on camera all the time <laughs> so, mm-hmm. and loves it. So um, maybe explore the options you have within your organization ahead of time. Just so you know, like if we ever got on TV with any of you actually want to do this because our head brewer doesn't totally understand. And I would agree with him. I don't think he's going to present well. Um, but is there anybody here who would like to do that? And we kind of like work together. So we know kind of our message, like what we would, if this happens, be prepared, be ahead of the game. Like now hear this, hear this podcast, then go just like pull your people, send out an email to your staff who would ever want to do TV. If we did TV, not saying we got a TV opportunity, but um, it's if really cool. Did. No, I mean, uh, so next year we're doing the San Diego Beer News Awards. It's going to be our fourth annual. I'm going to make the theme of it the next generation and try to get more people you never see from breweries. The next generation of the younger folks coming up that the breweries believe in and think like, and they're just, they're an awesome brewer who never gets a shot to be in front of anybody. Yeah. And get them out there and just like have a chance to get them in the spotlight a little bit and just kind of get recognized for and a little bit. that's really awesome to hear. And one thing that, you know, within the guild we've been, Speaking about this year is one of our goals for next year is to have events, whether it's tapping in knowledge or a member meetup and look around the room and not know half the people. Oh, yeah. You know, right, right. and I think that's going to really breed an inclusive environment and bring a lot of innovative ideas that, you know, is outside of our network. Oh. And that's really exciting. But attention, brewing professionals. Are you looking to elevate your presence in the heart of San Diego's craft beer industry? Consider joining the San Diego Brewers Guild as a professional or affiliate member today. Access exclusive benefits designed to propel your craft to new heights. Gain entry to premier industry events and educational resources. And forge vital connections within our brewing community. Visit sdbeer.com to explore the full list of advantages that a membership offers. Join the Capital Craft Podcast and the San Diego Brewers Guild celebrating craft beer in San Diego since 1997. What are the, the three key things that you look for when when a brewery is outreaching to you or ways that you think that they can become successful when it comes to media outreach and, and engagement. Thinking about the way you're presenting your information is the biggest thing. Uh, try and, to try to cover as many bases as you can, as far as like put all the info out there that's useful. And in, in case say I am an outlet that has to like rush or you're hitting me right near the publication cycle. If I'm a magazine or, or something like that, or like it's the newspaper and their night and day comes out with the beer section, the second third, you know, every other Thursday and you hit me up on a Tuesday. I mean, like, there's so many neighborhood 
yeah. papers and publications and websites for San Diego. It's crazy. If I have everything, I can go. But if I can't, don't have another opportunity for two weeks to cover something, by then maybe it's not that information is no longer any good. So just mm -hmm. try to get as much as you can in there. Something complete. Just be complete like you would be with anything else. I mean, you wouldn't you wouldn't compose a beer recipe that wasn't probably well, I don't know what yeast I'm going to use yet, right? Or <laughs> never, I, I, no, you know, that would never happen. I'm still hung up on the dry hop. You're probably not. You, yeah, you know, you'd have a complete thing. Here's what we're thinking to go with. What do you think? Let's tweak this, tweak that. Go mm -hmm. with that. But um, just be complete. Uh, make sure that the um, the mode of deliverance, a uh, delivery is is great for uh, for that individual person. If you know it, if not, it's okay. And just make sure that your news is relevant. Like I said before, to who you're sending it to, because there, you've hit three things that are really important. It's relevant to the person I'm sending it to. They're probably going to see it because I sent it via the, the right, correct manner. And then, uh, you know, and it's of complete, course, yeah. and not just the press release, but with also some visuals if mm -hmm. I can. Mm -hmm. Or like here, the best thing is like, here's a link to our to visuals, mm -hmm. general interest for the brewery, as well as things that are specific to this, if you can do it. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's just some news items that uh, I don't blame anybody because like, I'm going to open something in Solana Beach. Well, I don't have pictures of that. I don't have a drawing of that. I don't have anything. I'll, but here's a picture of a beer and a brand in glass. It's like, okay, well, that's something. That's better that's than That's the nothing. best you can do. And I understand that. I mean, this is all, it's not physical yet. It's all, you know, in my mind, we're going to do this. But um, yeah, just make it as easy as possible. And then uh, be, a, you know, make sure that they know you're available to give them more. If you, if they want it, you want to talk to somebody, I'd be happy to set up an interview, whatever you need. But, um, you know, Speak to them personally. Maybe a, maybe an opening line that's just loved your segment on blank this morning. I do that. Works out pretty well. And they know that you're actually watching, but mm -hmm. that's for TV. But um, yeah, just make a connection. Try to make a connection and and just be uh, be courteous with their time and 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 the way and what you give them. You know, like, here's what you need. I got it. I understand. Let me know if you need more. So we want to thank you for coming out today. It's always a pleasure. Um, but before we go, we want to ask you, what does the San Diego Brewers Guild mean to Brandon Hernandez? To Brandon Hernandez. Well, first off, they have me on podcasts sometimes. <laughs> it's really fun. Um, it's kind of interesting because I've been working with the San Diego Brewers Guild since 2007. So it's changed a lot since then. So it's been at different times in my career, including when I was in the industry, different things to me. I mean, I've watched it change and uh, it's been different things under different I guess, I guess you'd say regimes because it changes you know you have board of directors every two years new leader every year um i've seen successes i've seen things that didn't quite get there you know like i could even say like some failures here and there but i mean that's with any organization you're going to see it if you ask me what i see with the guild now I see something that's kind of at a crossroads because the industry is in an interesting place right now the economy is not optimal and it's not optimal for producers of beer. So I see an opportunity and probably just every, every organization probably needs to have a moment where it kind of gets to reset for the times. I think that's where the guild's at right now. Um, from the things I've heard through conversations with people within, I think that that's kind of what's being done is like an assessment and like, okay, we're not in the heyday anymore. We're not in COVID anymore. Where are we now? We need to see what we can do that's relevant and helpful for the members now. And I think that there's a real opportunity to do that. So I'm looking forward to this next year to two years, this new age of new chapter. I mean, we got a new ED. <laughs> um, so that's really cool because that's the perfect, it's perfect to have a new person when you're looking at what you're going to do moving forward. And um, the fact that the guild's listening to it's a membership probably now more than that many different times since 2007, since I've been doing it um, is great. And as long as those line of communications are there and you guys are listening and figuring it out together, I, th I think the best days of the guild are actually ahead of it. So it, it's always been a great tool to utilize, to bring everybody together and work as a force. So I I'm, I'd love to see that. And also um, I'm looking forward to um, not just events happening again, but new ones uh, that kind of are, ready for these times and reporting on them. So uh, when, <laughs> oh, it, when you figure that. it all yeah, out, right. you let me know. And then uh, you don't even have to give me a press release. We'll just work on it <laughs> over the phone. Well, cheers to that. You've been listening to the Capital Craft Podcast brought to you by the San Diego Brewers Guild. <laughs>